I watched the full leaked George Floyd body worn camera video of the incident leading up to his you know what. Now, I have mixed emotions about this. I'm not going to lie, man. I have mixed emotions. I can see it from his perspective and I can see it from the police perspective. Let me start with his perspective. Now, I think that it is reprehensible for people to be using drugs. Clearly, the autopsy showed that he was on methamphetamine and fentanyl at lethal dosages. That's exactly why he was acting the way he was acting. But I do understand because I have family members that are on drugs, currently on drugs, was on drugs, died from drugs. My stepfather died from a heroin overdose. So I understand what it's like to be around somebody or what it is like for people to be addicted to a substance. And, and I believe that there is a level of uh, compassion that could be had that can lead to a better outcome and a better situation. Not saying the officers were right or wrong in this situation, but I can see that George Floyd is definitely struggling from some type of ingestment or he has ingested uh, a lethal dosage of a drug that's causing him to be radical, causing him to be crazy, emotional, and unstable. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if, if the uh, methamphetamine was able to prevent the fentanyl from like killing him. Because usually lethal doses, uh, lethal doses of uh, uh, fentanyl uh, uh, kill people uh, pretty rapidly. Now, that's his perspective. Now, the police perspective. I mean, what do you expect them to do? They get to a gentleman who they don't know, who they have no reason to know, that has just committed a crime in a convenience store or in, in, a, in, a, in a place of business. He's outside. He's not complying at the, at, the, at the beginning of the video. He's not complying. At one point, he didn't even show his hands. The officer had to pull his gun out uh, to threaten him to, to display his hands. Now, he's what we call passive aggressive. That means that he's not overtly doing any action that's aggressive to the police officer, like punching him, hitting him or whatever. But he's passively not following directions. Okay, so uh, cops consider it dangerous to be passive aggressive. Um, so that makes it okay for cops to immediately threaten people with uh, death because they're quote-unquote passive-aggressive and not um, listening to the commands of a cop. That, that in my opinion, is uh, pretty extreme as it's uh, you get two options, either obey the cops or die. That is some of the most dangerous situations you can put yourself in or be in as a police officer when somebody's passively not uh, complying, then they end up getting a weapon and then you hurt. So they gave him commands. I think uh, I'm totally cool with that. 100%. I never cursed on duty. So I, I don't, I don't really think that it's necessary to curse at people, but if that's the way you conduct yourself, that's the way you conduct yourself. It's not against the law. Now, um, it's it's not against the law, but it is pretty unprofessional for a cop to start cussing at a person uh, pretty much without uh, justification. I think that the officers did what they supposed to do. He was resisting arrest at the door when he was parked on the side of the road. And you'll, guys, you'll see the full video. It's on Tatum Report. You can go watch the full video. Obviously, I can't play it here. But you can see he was resisting arrest. He wasn't complying. He was incoherent. He gets out of the car. He's still incoherent. He's not following directions. He's up and down. I, I find it interesting that he's already claiming that the person is resisting arrest while in the car just for not showing his hands. Emotionally here, emotionally there. He gets to the patrol car. Um, he's resisting arrest. He don't want to get in the car. He's not making a statement and then moving with it. He's com he's com inconsistently back and forth. I don't want to get in the car. I'm claustrophobic. Well, I'm cool. Well, you was totally fine in the driver's side, the driver's seat of that other vehicle. Now you want to get in the back of the police car. Now you somehow somehow you're claustrophobic. You've been arrested several times before. So he's 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 having these emotional drama that the police officers are observing. Um, he's he's not complying. He's, he's not seeming to want to ever get in the car. If they just let it go, he'll never get in the car. Some some people may think that, no, he would, no, he would never get in the car. He would make... Mm, you can't say he would never get in a car. You don't actually uh, know that. Could, uh, could, you know, there there is the possibility that if they uh, had um, 
set him down, uh, let him relax a little bit, that he would have, uh, uh, you know, decided to get into the car with, with the cops. Make an excuse all the way to the end. Now, when he was in the car, they put him in the car, he kicks himself out of the car, tell them, I want to lay on the ground. That's information that nobody's talking about. He pretty much told the police officer that he would rather lay on the ground. So they laid him on the ground. Not uh, Yes, he does uh, end up kicking himself out of the car or something to where he's, he is on the ground. Uh, but then the cop uh, puts his knee on uh, his neck, which is not something a cop is supposed to do when trying to restrain a person. Not against his will, not malicious force, but they did what he felt he wanted to do because he was so non-compliant in the vehicle. Now, obviously they called the uh, paramedics to come and see him because they knew he was high on something. Erratic behavior is very consistent with the way he was he was acting. Now, that's the synopsis of the entire video. But let me add uh, something to the very end of this, which is a result of George Floyd dying that I think. Well, the the. The, the the video that they show um, that is uh, that has been leaked at least uh, one that I watched it uh, doesn't show them uh, calling the ambulance but it uh, does show the part where uh, they're kind of struggling together after getting out of the car. I think people aren't talking about it. I spoke about it in my first video. Let's talk about the, the excited delirium phenomenon. Now, one of the officers who was a rookie, matter of fact, two officers were rookies, and then there were two officers that were on the department longer than rookie status. Um, officer Chauvin, who was the main police officer involved in this, was on for several years, over a decade. So um, he has a lot. Uh, office, officer uh, Chauvin also has like 18 complaints against him. Um, um, one involving the use of a gun. Um, so he has a history of uh, uh, violence in his past. A lot of experience. He was the lead police officer. I think he was even the FTO of one of the, the young police officers. So while he was on the ground having these experiences, when they called medical assistance, uh, the younger officer alluded to, according to his lawyer, that George Floyd needed to be rolled to his side because he could be experiencing excited delirium. Now, for those of you who don't know what excited delirium is, it's pretty much when you get on a, a, a upper, a drug that's an upper, like methamphetamines, like fentanyl, and it gets your heart rate up. You get, uh, uh, you know, very aggravated. You, you get superhuman strength, and then you begin to crash, kind of like a, a sugar crash. You begin to crash all the way to the point that you die. You never stop crashing. You go into cardiac arrest. It's called excited delirium. They teach us in the academy way back in 2010. Um, I'm sure they, they've been teaching it all over the country. That was an indication that George Floyd could have been experiencing excited delirium, which had nothing to do with the knee. I'm not saying that that's the cause of it. We'll find that in court. But what I'm saying is that it possibly had nothing to do with the knee. It had everything to do with the drugs he ingested, which caused him to crash and burn, pretty much. And, and, and I'm not trying to be offensive. But that Okay, so, uh, I mean, that could be possible but uh, having somebody's knee on your neck for you know up to 10 minutes is uh is a pretty big factor in killing somebody that's kind of the term that we use so those things are important to note on top of the video that you saw on top of the response that the police had and people don't know this, but I think it's invaluable to talk about this. One of the officers did conduct CPR on George Floyd while he was in the back of the ambulance waiting for them to hook up all the, the vital cords or whatever they had to, to do to treat him. He was giving them chest compressions and CPR. So the myth that nobody helped him, the myth that everybody should go to prison is that it's just a myth. All the other officers, in my personal opinion, should not be held accountable for the knee and, and, and Officer Chauvin. Well, the... The two people that had their, uh, that were on top of George Floyd, because there was also two cops on his back and legs, uh, besides Chauvin being on his knee, those two should also uh, be part of it. Then there was the one guy who was just keeping everybody at bay. He could be considered like an accomplice. 
Now, Officer Chauvin is in a pickle because what he did visibly did not look appropriate. I mean, as a former police officer, and I taught new officers how to become officers. I was an FTO as well. It does not seem to be appropriate. When you got your knee on the man's neck, no matter how much pressure you're putting on him, you, you got to, at some point, you kind of got to play to the camera. I don't know. I don't understand how police officers don't understand this. You got to play to the camera to a certain degree. You what do you mean by play to the camera? That seems kind of shady advice to tell people. You got to be communicate with them like, hey, man, look, I, I took my knee off of you, but you started acting up. I'm putting my knee back on you because you're not. OK, I'll get off. If you start moving, I'm going to go back on. Play that game, even though you know it's bull crap. Play. Oh, kind of just pretend you're going to, you know, take your knee off of a person's neck, but let them kind of, you know, struggle a little bit. So you have justification to then uh, put your knee back on their neck. Why do you need to put your knee on a person's neck to begin with? That doesn't seem to be a uh, legal uh, restraining method for a cop. Played the game so uh, on Monday morning when people begin to evaluate you, that at least it looks like you were attempting to work with him. Also, why do you consider it to be a game? This is not like uh, some simulation where the people that are dying are ones and zeros. It's, uh, you know, it's real people that are actually dying. Instead of looking like you're just kneeling in the death. Now, what I will say is that um, he's in a dilemma because he could be charged and he could not be charged. And people aren't ready to entertain that. If excited delirium type scenario occurred, he died from heavy doses of fentanyl and methamphetamines. It's going to have nothing to do with Officer Chauvin's actions. Then he's not going to get charged. If they decide that Officer Chauvin's actions exacerbated excited delirium or exacerbated, he had a reason to know that it was causing the death of George Floyd then um, he's going to be in trouble. But I think this video was very revealing. It showed a lot of content. I think even if they try to claim that it was uh, excited delirium, the fact that uh, they put him into um, an illegal restraint should be uh, at least get him charged with manslaughter or something uh, because... Uh, Cops need to know that that's not something that they can do. Uh, put their knee on people's necks for 10 minutes. Next to what was going on, people like myself, Candace Owens, and others were already telling people that he had resisted, that it wasn't just an innocent black man doing nothing, crying for his mama. It was a lot of other stuff involved. Now, he was high on drugs, but they also had no reason to uh, baby him and put a pacifier in his mouth and rub his back while he go to jail. So, I mean... Resisting arrest um, and drug use doesn't really make you like a violent criminal. Um, so like the response with the gun and everything was, in my opinion, a little bit over the top. Um, but uh, this is like one reason why like uh, counselors and medical professionals would be able to uh, uh, be better at helping these types of people because um, a counter, uh, you know, a counterfeit twenty is not like some kind of violent crime, so uh, you really didn't need like some kind of armed response. I hope this video will give you some context. TatumReport.com will have the full video. You can watch this; it's like eight minutes long. You can go on there. The link is in the description section. But. I can talk about this for another hour, but I want you to watch the rest of my videos. Go in the comment section and comment. Let me know what you thought about the video. Are you conflicted? Is this cut and dry? Did this open your eyes to something? Did this verify something for you or did it do nothing? Let me know in the comment section. Like and subscribe to the channel. Visit the Officer Tatum store where you get all the cool merch. Y'all. Uh, for me, it still didn't justify the cop having his knee on Floyd's neck for uh, uh, 10 minutes. And it kind of showed the, the cops' behavior in the ver at the very get-go, where they wanted to be aggressive and pulling a gun out on him just for not showing his hands and stuff. It seems um, inappropriate uh, and uh, excessive.